I just felt like he had he had done his job. Um, it was seven up downs. It was a, it was a big ass. There's there's a ton of emotion that goes into this day and into every World Series game. I just I looked him up and down. I looked him looked him over, and I felt like he was getting a little fatigued. Um, and it was a little bit more of a um, an agreeing type of a conversation that we had. And he understood where I was coming from. And, you know, it's typically you got to tell Merrill why. you got to tell him what's, what's on your mind. And if there's buy-in, he'll accept it. If not, he'll continue to um, hammer away at you. But I told him, you know, you did your job, seven up down. It's time to turn it over to the bullpen. we got some guys that need some work. And, and, and it's their job to secure this victory. And he said, okay. So as the lead widened in the eighth, top of the eighth, mm -hmm. you, you could have let him get a couple of batters just to see how he was going and, 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 and then made it to the move. Yeah. Um, it, it crossed my mind it was, as it was happening, but I'd already made the decision. He's got one more start for the 2023 season, and I want to have him fully gassed up, and I want to save as many bullets and save as many pitches, as I po or, uh, up downs and pitches as I possibly could. So um, he understood that. And then finally, um, do you think there's ever going to be a complete game in the World <laughs> Series or playoffs again? Last that's what, playoffs that's, was 17, last yeah. World Series was 15. Yeah, that's what you were hoping for. You're such, you're, you're, you're such an, a traditionalist, I know it. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think you will. I think this, there's a possibility. It was it was looking really good for Merrill. There's no doubt in my mind. It was some quick, easy outs, and I thought he might go nine innings today at one point. But for that to happen, 89 pitches, you got to jump him up probably another 35. I wasn't gonna let him throw 120 pitches. On the left side, Tori, if you uh, sorry, if you yeah. zoom out from tonight, uh, he did this in Philadelphia in an elimination game. He did this in Dodger Stadium, where he had never beaten the Dodgers. Yeah. What are we watching here with Merrill in this postseason? Uh, I think there's a little bit of an evolution, um, a little bit of a maturity uh, that continues to show up with him in, in every outing. Um, he takes he takes things personally um, upon himself to get better every single start. He's aware. He's present, uh, and he's getting better and better with every start. Um, you can't simulate postseason wins. You can't, let's say, you can't simulate postseason starts. He has really s stepped on it and gotten after it and gotten even better, which to me is not surprising because that's who he is at his core. He wants the biggest moment, the biggest stage to show what he's capable of doing. And this was a big win. You know, you're talking about a team that got beat last night. Uh, after being two outs away from a win, um, there is there is a concern of, of momentum in the other direction. I think the first couple innings he said, I got you guys until you get your feet on the ground, and, and we did. And we won this game because of Merrill today. Teo? If there's been one knock on Merrill this season, it's probably a lack of control at times, too many walks. Today, for him to not walk anybody after you guys had 10 walks yesterday, what, what yeah. did that change for, for you guys? Uh, I... I know that at the beginning of the year there were some wobbly moments, and I think that had more to do with his prep and getting ready for the WBC. He he ramped up well ahead of everybody else, um, and you know he came back from the WBC. There's probably a little bit of an emotional letdown. All of a sudden he's thrust into some big league games, and you know may, maybe there was just a continuation mindset that he didn't feel it yet. But we've seen that improve since the first month of the season. I think there were some four-walk games, maybe even a five-walk game, if I can remember correctly, in April, early May. But he's a, he's a balanced field guy, gets his alignment, and when it's right, it's really good, and that's what you see. And I did notice the strikeouts. I did notice that there were no walks. And I felt like after this, probably the, between pitch 16 and 20, and I think he was at the 20 after two, that it was going real good for him. The changeup was going down. I couldn't tell if it was a slider or a changeup. He had it all working. What was your reaction in the dugout watching him the third time through the order, five strikeouts against six guys? It was impressive. It was real impressive. And that's what a, that's a real good starting pitcher is able to do. This, this lineup is extremely potent and capable of turning it around in a hurry, but he made pitches. Clinton? Outside of one glaring mistake tonight, uh, you guys are running the bases really well. It's changed a lot from the last series. Can you talk to me a little bit about how that's changed from previously to now in terms of your aggressiveness and what you guys are doing strategically? Right. I know I talked. I, I think I might have spoken to you about it that one day um, in Philly. But 
uh, we have our targets, we have our times, we have our uh, situations based on the score, innings, outs, hitter, uh, and some things lined up today. And we're, and we're trying to be as aggressive as possible because we know it adds energy to this ball club. Yeah, there was a big hiccup today. Those are things. Those, you know, I think you got to live and die when you're w with with good and bad moments when you're going to take chances. Um, but our team is smart with a very high baseball IQ, and they're tremendously disciplined to pick the right times. It's hard to it's hard to say that you are you are ready to go and ready to steal a base, but you don't have enough triggers based on what our criteria is to steal a base. That's the true meaning of discipline when not to go, and I think that's what why we're so successful. We'll finish up with Bill in the middle. Yeah. Uh, at the trade deadline, fans understandably look at big names, maybe like Scherzer or Verlander, but there's a lot of guys like Tommy that get traded that you don't hear as much about. What did you guys want him to do when you got him, and how has he filled whatever role you had along the way? Yeah, right. He goes out there and bangs out four base hits today and has a really good approach. Um, but I think the thing he added was um, was – some toughness, some focus, and and his ability to prepare became very contagious. There's no nonsense about his work day. He's a great teammate. He's an unbelievable teammate. And I know we got better because of all the things that he brings to the table that don't get seen on a, in a box score. It's nice to get those four hits today. Of course, it set a great tone for us. but. He's a very intense competitor with zero room for nonsense. And I think that that personifies who we are when we get between the white lines at, at 705 every night.